Awesome, thank you. All right, welcome to our talk. Thank you for coming uh, to hear us today. This is how you auto magic your attack simulation, although there's no real auto magic to it. But my name is JJ Widener. I was a former manager of Blue KC and of information security. Currently, I'm a data protection architect at Kimball and Clark. And I'm Amy Harvard. I'm a security engineer at Blue Cross Blue Shield of Kansas City. Awesome. So back to the auto magic of your attack simulation. So it's not really auto magical. They're just using the same tactics, techniques, and procedures that a lot of the threat and adversarial uh, groups are using. Uh, it's just packaged up in a system that can run continuously and, and automated uh, in your environment. So the tool that uh, Blue KC uses is called Safe Breach. Uh, it helps whenever you're you know, a smaller team and you can uh, you're wanting to launch something quickly. You're able to get in and use uh, an attack simulation software like this. Other uh, vendors include Attack IQ, Pantera, Veroden, and SafeBreach. So uh, SafeBreach also provides you know, mapping to the MITRE attack framework and also to uh, NIST 853 controls. So it provides some good level reporting as well. So I already mentioned it, why breach an attack simulation software? Uh, it helps augment some staff. Uh, you know, if, you're, if you don't have the size and capability of hiring a full red team, uh, this could augment some of that functionality where you're getting in and you're, you're setting up a system to run those continuous attacks. Uh, so whenever you're running that, uh, they have pre-made scenarios in there as well that you can do continuous security control validation. Uh, you can have uh, customized attacks. So one of the ones that Amy is going to talk about is the Cisco attack back in August 2022, you know, just about two months ago, that within 24 hours, the attack simulation was in the system, so you can uh, run that and, and provide a report. So I'm going to turn it over to Amy, that's uh, gonna go over some of the more technical details of uh, Safe Breach and how it's utilized in the UKC. Thank you. Safe Breach offers integrations for antivirus, endpoint detection response, management, threat intelligence, and automation. With these integrations in place, the simulations can pull the logs from those tools to tell the story of what that control detected. In this example, uh, logs from Microsoft Defender and Palo Alto Panorama were found for this simulation. Once the simulations are complete, an interactive dashboard is provided to review the findings and control status breakdown. There is also direct navigation to detailed simulation results, remediation tasks, a MITRE uh, heat map, vulnerability data, and dashboards. Shown here is a breakdown of how three security controls performed during a set of simulations. So what is this uh, graphic here for Microsoft Defender actually showing us? So what this is telling us about our Defender for the simulation is that only seven of the simulations were detected or alerted upon, three were completely prevented, and about 537 were logged by the security tool Defender, but no, nothing else happened, no, no alerting, no prevention. SafeBreach maps simulations to the MITRE ATT&CK framework. Here's a look of part of that MITRE heat map in SafeBreach. It allows for a quick view of which tactics were missed, detected, or prevented. This aids in determining which tactics uh, need to have more focus for alerting and remediation. So with a heat map, red is bad, right? Yes. Green is good? Yes. So if it's red, that means we did not detect or alert or prevent that type of activity. And green means it was prevented. Yeah. What do the different colors mean? So yeah, red means that the attacks were missed. Green is prevented or stopped and orange would be simply just detected or alerted upon. SafeBreach offers analysis for mediation of individual simulators, or you can examine the findings that will correct over issues over many platforms. For example, this finding shows that if we remediate 45 hashes, it would affect eight simulators and over 5,000 simulations. So whenever you have a list of hashes here, what would you do with these hashes that are showing up in the system to help prevent or uh, help the simulation software or help the, I guess, the information security posture? 
So I would take these hashes and set them in our uh, EDR, endpoint detection response, and I'd block the hashes. And then I would rerun these simulations to confirm that the blocking is taking place. Okay, so, so with dumping these 45 hashes, say, into Defender EDR or whatever EDR tool, you run the simulation again, it's going to come up and say, you know, more are now blocked. Yep. So uh, the next part of this presentation is going to go over some more use cases, uh, how uh, safe breach can be utilized or any you know, breach in the tech simulation software can be utilized in a product comparison uh, for pre and post implementation of systems as well. So if you're wanting to understand you know, how is your system performing uh, or how is it blocking, you know, uh, you're able to run uh, this type of attack simulation to, to show that information. Uh, she's also going to go over some network segmentation tests that you can perform with, uh, with SafeReach as well. And of course, everybody likes the Knights who say NIST. So, uh, the NIST evaluation, and, perform, and if you don't know Monty Python, I'm sorry, no, you should. Uh, it's a lot, a lot of fun. Um, but the NIST reporting, NIST evaluation for your security controls, and then she's going to go into how you can create uh, customized attacks within the system. All right. So not only can you attack your attack simulation systems help validate your current security controls, but you can actually use them to test out and compare new security controls. In this example, one simulator was set up with antivirus A and the other with antivirus B. Uh, the same simulations were ran on both simulators and added, and sorry, were ran on both simulators and added. Sorry, I ran the same simulations on both simulators and added both to our scorecard. As you can see here, the results were pretty close between these two products. This is why we always pair these tests with a well thought out scorecard to determine which product will serve us best. So with this, this output from the, the system, I mean, the scores are fairly similar. What other criteria, I mean, if, if you're doing a product comparison and it looks this close, what other criteria would you use? or making a recommendation on selection of a product. Right, so in this scenario, the products were EDR, uh, endpoint detection and response. So you want to take into consideration ease of use of the platform, uh, what kind of hashes will the platform accept. Um, the biggest thing probably is cost um, and just usability for your analysts. In another case, we wanted to see how our environment would improve once a security control was implemented. I ran a set of simulations on one simulator without the new control, and then I ran the same simulations with the new control in place. As you can see on the right chart, uh, the security posture was greatly improved. You can see originally we only had 47% we of our simulations were not blocked, but after the new control, 27% were not blocked. So th this information is gold. If you're you know, responsible for implementation of a of a product and you're wanting to show ROI and return on investment for your product that you just implemented and you're able to run an attack simulation beforehand and then afterwards and you're showing this type of data uh, you know, to any management or, you know, or anybody, I mean, it just makes you feel better that the, the product you've implemented is actually blocking more, right? Absolutely. Another great use case for attack simulation is network segmentation monitoring. I set up lateral movement simulations to run regularly to ensure our offshore segment has not had any network changes that would allow for lateral movement. So in this, uh, in this picture you can see that 100% uh, of the 20, over 23,000 simulations were stopped or prevented. Should I ever have this run and I see things are missed or logged only or detected, um, I know something's changed in my network, and I need to take action to remediate that since we, are, we cannot have data going to our offshore segment. And, and that activity could be maybe a misconfiguration or, you know, nobody's ever had somebody that just, you know, opens up ports or opens up access without going through proper change control and vetting. So, uh, so this type of simulation might alert to that, right? Or it could also alert to malicious activity, is that right? Exactly. So yeah, if you're so if you're running this and all of a sudden something pops up, how would this alert you? Would it send you an alert through the SIM or? Yeah, you can integrate and have alerts set up through your uh, you know ServiceNow ticketing, um, or you can give SIM alerts as well. 
A recent use case for attack simulation was the Cisco network breach. Safe breach, safe breach had a scenario prepped and ready to run within 24 hours. This allowed me to configure and run the test and provide a report to my CISO uh, pretty quickly. In this picture, I show you how each scenario is broken into steps that are configurable to whichever data assets or simulators you want to test with. On the right, um, you can see some of the individual simulations that make up the scenario. These include command and control, malware drops, configuration changes, and malware transfer. So the same tactics, techniques, and procedures for this APT, uh, I don't know how to pronounce that, ransomware game. So this would actually be the, the itemized list of the steps that, you know, for at least from a uh, perspective, uh, that this threat actor, this adversary is going through yes. uh, to attack using this APT. Yes, exactly. Okay, so with, with these tactics and, and procedures, so you were able to provide this to the CISO, uh, was it, I mean, it was like the next day, right? I remember, mm -hmm. I it remember It was a Saturday, asking, I got picked on a Saturday, y'all, for this report. Yeah, it's never, a typical CISO, right? It never happens on a Saturday. <laughs> so, because, you know, so let's say Friday, you know, the, C, the big CISO breach was announced, and then you're getting in because you got pinged by the CISO, and you, you hopped in here, and like, oh, I think it was actually an email. They notified us mm -hmm. and said, hey, the Cisco attack breach uh, simulation is within the system. Mm -hmm. So you were just able to go in there and kick it off. Yeah, it's easy. I just click a button and run it. Yeah, That's cool. unless and you it, want to do more configuration. It doesn't provide you a, like a report of yep. like, like. A really seen. nice uh, management level report. Nice. With, with graphs and like the Lots speed zones and the greens. Yep. Okay. Yeah, colors. Colors are good. Like yeah. All right, SafeBreach offers fantastic reporting that allows me to use all my data to create purposeful dashboards. One area of focus for us is NIST 853. Not only do we have scenarios set up to regularly test NIST controls, but we also have results on a dashboard that can be used in management reporting. You can see an example on the left of the results for a configuration management scenario. And on the right, you can see those results broken down further into specific controls. So, so if we're implementing NIST controls, and we get a report like this, and we want to go through and say, you know, we're gonna we're gonna shore up our configuration settings. We're gonna get some config management in here, and we're we're gonna implement some changes, and we're we're wanting to get better at this NIST control. Uh, you implement the changes. You know, it's all going through change control. You implement the changes, and then you could say. Show, show me what changes you made according to this attack simulation and how this, uh, you know, this system is actually pulling up that NIST data and it'll show you, okay, yeah, now, now we're, we've configured the system better, uh, we're showing less red, uh, you know, less orange and more green, yep. uh, but these have been configured. Yep. And it allows management to present that to, to even higher management to say this is how we did it, rather than just saying we did it, we can show that we did it. Does it have any of the CIS like top twenty? Uh, there are C there there are scenarios around CIS benchmarking, and you can, we do reporting on that as well. Okay, very cool. Yeah. Finally, one of my favorite things about Safe Breach is that it allows me to clone an attack and make it my own. Many times we receive threat intelligence before it hits public, and I can add those indicators of compromise to my controls, build a simulation with those controls with those indicators, and then I can run the simulation to ensure my controls are truly detecting or blocking. Um, some of the things you can configure within an attack would be hashes, IP addresses, ports, protocols, uh, wait time, and actions such as opening, modifying, deleting. Okay, so uh, on the, the slide we looked at earlier where it listed out the APT list of things, so could you copy one of those APTs and make your own customized attack from that? Yeah, absolutely can. And let's say some new uh, threat intelligence comes out about, oh, here's some fresh hashes. Um, it's not fully out yet to the public. Um, I can just take and add those hashes to the simulation. Once I've added them to my own uh, EDR and ensured I set it to block, and then I can prove out that uh, we are detecting or blocking. Okay, so like if we're paying attention to the threat intel channel and they say this attack is similar to you know, lapsus, you know, ransomware gang or some other type of well-known APT, uh, but we added these hashes to that, uh, and maybe they, they have a team that's doing it, you're able to get in to save reasons, you know, a team doesn't exist to do this type of work, 
and add those additional IOCs, hashes, whatever, and then run that, that attack. Yeah, I can, and it's, it's so easy. SafeReach makes it so easy. You don't need to have any coding knowledge. I certainly don't. Um, it's a very easy interface to use. It's simply uh, click the field and add the hashes you want to you want to test. Is it a WYSIWYG? A WYSIWYG, yes. What you see, what you get. <laughs> yes. That's cool. So you can drag and drop and, and configure from mm -hmm. that aspect. Yep. So, uh, in summary, uh, you know, small teams can benefit from a, a breach attack simulation software if you don't have the, you know, the full-blown team to, to go do red teaming. Uh, a lot of organizations don't have the, the funding for that, so it does allow you to you know, expand the capability to run those automated and continuous attacks, uh, modify you know, some APTs, modify some of the customize or create your own uh, to, to run those, uh, those automated attacks as well. It has a lot of reporting options, which is great. You know, if you want to know, you know, how your system is performing against these attack simulations, there's a lot of uh, excellent reporting options out of that. So I know uh, from doing red team engagements or, or others performing red team engagements, the report writing uh, is a significant portion of that. So if you still need uh, the reports from there, or you're wanting your red team and you want to, you know, perform your own type of uh, customized attacks that you're going to create and then it spits out that report that you can incorporate in your own type of reporting. I'm sure it could be utilized for that as well. Uh, and then using those actionable findings to improve uh, you know, the security posture. So from an implementation standpoint, how quick and easy was it to, to set up? Uh, it's been a few years, but it's, it's quite easy. You can, even, you can either set up uh, specific simulators in your environment, specific machines, or you can install the simulator on your machine or any active server um, without harm to those devices, and you can kick off um, simulations right away. Okay, so you can walk around with your laptop and kick off a simulation from wherever? Yeah. That's cool. All right, well, that is uh, our talk. So I appreciate everybody uh, coming out and, uh, and listening. Um, again, this is Amy's first time, so I'm excited to be here uh, with her as, as we gave this talk as well. So I will uh, turn it over to Amy. Uh, I just want to thank everyone also for being kind to my first talk. And you can find us wandering around the conference or on LinkedIn if you have any questions at all about um, how it, we did with our implementation of uh, breach and attack simulation. Awesome, and here's the feedback slide, so it helps us get better.